Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Advanced Digital Synthesis. Uh, this will be the second part of Unit One, in which we will study in detail about the MOS transistor. Uh, the outline of this uh, presentation is: uh, we'll study about the MOS capacitor in detail. We will look at the IV characteristics of NMOS and PMOS. We'll look at uh, how different how uh, to encounter different capacitances in a MOS circuit, uh, we will understand various capacitances associated with it. We will look at the two major capacitance types of capacitances, gate and diffusion. We will look at a very interesting application of uh, MOS uh, in terms of pass transistors. We will look at how to estimate the RC delay of a CMOS circuit. And then uh, we'll go and uh, we'll go and see what are the non-ideal uh, effects in in MOS. Uh, the the first part is obviously the ideal equations of MOS, uh, and the latter part we'll see the uh, various effects that uh, make MOS deviate from this ideal behavior. So till now, uh, in the last lecture, we saw the application of MOS as an ideal switch. That was just an introduction. So we saw how the switch behavior can be utilized to construct gates. Now uh, the transistor in on phase will pass a finite amount of current, which will depend on the terminal voltages. What is the VDD, for example? We uh, we will see how this current depends on the voltage and on the various parameters related to the MOS. The transistor uh, gate source drain all exhibit some amount of capacitance with respect to ground. Now, since I is equal to C dB by dt, that means the the cap capacitance. So we rearrange the equation to calculate the time in terms of C and I uh, and variation with voltage. So the constant here C and I. They actually determine the speed of the gate. What this means, in other terms, is that the effect of changing input, the the changing input can be described by delta v here. The effect of changing input takes some finite amount of time to get translated into the output. Let's say, in case of an inverter, an input rising would cause Input rising from zero to let's say VDD would cause the output to fall from VDD to zero. This change in effect, this change in output, will depend on the capacitances of MOS and plus the current. And hence, we say that it takes a finite amount of time for input to reflect on the output. We'll also see uh, what a degraded level means. That means. Uh, uh, we say that NMOS is passes a strong zero but a weak one. In other terms, NMOS passes a, a degraded level in the, when it passes VDD. We will see what that actually means. This, the symbols below are the most common. The, these two symbols on the left side are the common symbols used for MOS. NMOS. The this one, uh, the right one uh, with an arrow, represents the. Uh, Substrate connection, if it needs to be explicitly shown. Similarly, that the rightmost two symbols are for PMOS. So a MOS capacitor works in majorly three modes. One is the accumulation, the depletion, and the inversion. These three regions are defined by the voltage on the gate and the voltage on the drain. Uh, we'll see each of these three regions in detail. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, now uh, let's let's look at look briefly uh, at some of the terminal voltages. Uh, we say that the we denote the voltage on gate to be VG, voltage on source to be VS, voltage on drain to be VD. For uh, for discussion sake, let's first assume the voltage on source to be zero. Although source and drain are uh, symmetric, they can be used interchangeably. But we assume that uh, source is the terminal at lower voltage. That's why we say we always 
assume that VDS would be greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. So in this case, uh, let's say VGS is equal to VG minus VS. So if VS is zero, then VGS is simply VG. V gate to drain voltage is VG minus VD. V drain to source is VD minus VS or VGS minus VD. Both are true. Now NMOS, uh, we assume for now that NMOS substrate is grounded. That means VS and the body both are at zero voltage. For the for the sake of discussion, for now we will see how variation varying both VS and VD or, or voltage of the body will affect the operation. But for now, let's assume the source and body both to be at zero. There are three, three distinct regions of operation: cutoff, linear, and saturation. Let's look at each one of them. Okay, uh, we say that NMOS is in cutoff when VGS, that is the difference of voltage between gate and source, is less than is actually uh, significantly less less than the threshold voltage of the PN transistor. So uh, the threshold voltage of the diode, it is very similar to the threshold voltage of a, of a diode. Uh, let me, yeah. So uh, the uh, the gate. Uh, uh, so the the substrate. Please uh, note that substrate is uh, a P type material in case of NMOS. So uh, the negative voltage or a voltage which is less than less than the threshold voltage of this junction attracts holes in the substrate towards oxide. The holes will accumulate towards the surface, or in other words, the electrons here will be pushed down. The electrons here will be pushed down. This means that there will be no current. So we say the NMOS is in cutoff region. Now what happens when we start increasing VGS and once VGS comes close to VT? Yeah, so uh, once VGS uh, starts approaching VT, the uh, the voltage on or in other words the voltage on the gate uh, starts increasing to a positive value it starts repelling holes in the substrate that means now the the electrons are attracted slowly towards the surface or the holes are holes started to go deep down the substrate due to this very similar to a pn junction diode the region which is very close to the junction is devoid of any carriers the electric field is directed from gate to substrate a small depletion region forms this is very very similar to the pn junction diode i would uh, suggest that if you want to uh, go into the uh, the formation of depletion region into detail uh, please refer to the pn junction diode uh, in your uh, theory books uh, the, the explanation is similar it's very very same uh, now let's look at uh, so the thing to remember here is that vgs if it's less than or almost equal to VT, the NMOS remains in cutoff. It does not conduct any current. So as soon as VGS goes beyond VT, the electrons in in application to the electric field to the significant electric field start accumulating towards the towards the junction in the area here. The flow of electron is from source to drain. Now, uh, assume a, a small positive voltage on drain. So, uh, due to the electric field between drain and source, and the electric field between gate and source, okay, the electric field between gate and source results into the electrons coming closer to the junction. The electric field between gate and source propels the electrons towards drain. Resulting into a current which is called IDS or current between drain and source. It is very very similar to a linear resistor. However, in this case, we are assuming that the drain voltage is small, right? We will come to that. So, so the the definition of small here is that VDS should be 
less than VGS minus VT. In this case, uh, this region is called accumulation region, uh, where uh, uh, oh sorry, this region is called inversion region, where the uh, Y inversion because the, the substrate being P type and the carriers are are electrons. That is why it is called inversion region. Now what happens? So in this uh, in this region, a small increase in VDS will correspondingly result into an increase in IDS very similar to it behaves very similar to a register. So it is a linear region that is why we call it linear because it somehow mimics the Ohm's law. Now uh, what happens when uh, we start increasing uh, uh, we start uh, we start increasing VGS or, or, or VDS to uh, such that the condition occurs where VDS is equal to VGS minus V2. Now, uh, when VDS approaches VGS minus VD, the uh, the region here, which is which is very close to drain, uh, the region which is very close to drain, this part, the inversion layer gets pinched off. What what pinch off means is that uh, the inversion layer shows uh, the inversion layer will could be wider closer to source and it will start decreasing in width as so as close as it is it goes to the drain this is because the drain voltage this is caused by the drain voltage the difference in drain and gate gate voltage in other words the higher the voltage on vd the more electrons are pulled uh, the region in uh, closer to drain would would start getting devoid of electrons. This causes this region to pinch off, and we call this this to be the boundary of saturation. Why why saturation? I'll come to that in the next slide. Why we call it saturation? So the condition to remember here is that VGS should be greater than VT. So VGS minus VT would be a positive value. And VDS would be equal to VGS minus VT, or this voltage VGS minus VT is also called VD sat. This is the voltage at which the NMOS starts going into saturation. Uh, of course, the the thing to again remember here is that VD, VS, and VB are assumed to be zero for now. Now, what happens when VGS? VDS starts increasing beyond this saturation value. So when the VG, VDS goes beyond VD sat, or which is VDS minus VT, VGS minus VT, the pinch off starts coming, starts coming closer to the source. This means that the pinch, pinched off region, no, the channel no longer reaches drain. The condition is VDS is greater than VGS minus VT. Conduction is how uh, uh, a question might arise here that that there is no channel here, so how does the conduction take place? The conduction is possible by the drift mechanism of electrons. So the the higher voltage as as a drain pulls electrons quite fast. The electrons will travel very fast from this pinched off region to drain, but there will not not be any accumulation of electrons in this area. So the conduction still takes place. But the the channel current, but the the current here is almost independent of the drain voltage. So even a slightly higher voltage on drain over and above the VD sat will not affect the drain current by a big amount. For uh, let's say for now we assume that the drain current would remain constant in the saturation condition. We will see how uh, this is not exactly true, this is an ideal case, but uh, but yeah, uh, it is good to start off with the ideal case to understand the functionality better. So, uh, we say that uh, in, in ideal case, the drain current is linearly dependent on the drain voltage whenever the NMOS is in linear region and it saturates when VDS approaches VD sat. If VDS is increased beyond VD sat, the drain current remains constant. So, uh, combining all three regions, we can uh, make an IV curve of this device 
and IV curves a curve means that we plot the voltage versus current and see how the current is affected by the voltage. Uh, we will see the IV characteristics in, in one of the later slides. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's try to uh, quantify it. Let's try to quantify how the current depends on the voltage in the linear region and in the saturation region. So, current depends on the charge and the time. So, we answer two questions here: how much charge is in the channel, and secondly, how fast the charge is moving. Now the MOS capacitor looks like a parallel plate capacitor, the gate and the channel forming two ends of the capacitor while the oxide forming the diagrid. So the charge in the channel, uh, so uh, uh, just focus on the figure here, uh, the CG is nothing but the gate, gate capacitance, so the charge in the channel Q is equal to CV a very famous equation. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is uh, or CG the gate capacitance is epsilon OX which is the, the oxide parameter WL is the area width uh, just imagine it, it being a three dimensional uh, structure the area of this, this rectangle is WL and divided by the thickness of this oxide. So, uh, we say we define one more fig, uh, variable called one more rather constant called Cx, which is epsilon Ox by T of T Ox. Now this C ox is uh, technology dependent. What it means is that a particular foundry for a part, uh, this epsilon Ox depends on the type of material. So for example, for silicon dioxide, which is the most famous dielectric material in VLSI fabrication, it's a good insulator. Epsilon Ox being 3.9. The oxide thickness is also technology specific I mean for a particular technology there will be a particular thickness so this can be treated to be C ox can be treated as a constant for a particular technology. So the CG is C ox WL the voltage is the voltage at a particular point we at a particular point inside the channel we assume that we assume the voltage to be at the halfway point which is uh, so the voltage from drain to source is VDS since it is a linear region we uh, we assume the voltage to be at uh, the middle to be VDS by 2 and the the voltage that uh, matters that that pulls the charge is uh, that that forms the results in forming the charge is actually the gate to uh, this region uh, since we are talking about capacitance at these two points it will be VGS minus VDS by 2 minus VT we always uh, do not ever forget to take into account VT because uh, VT is the voltage uh, that is required to overcome the threshold of the uh, uh, threshold of the junction so it should always be subtracted from VGS so we now we got the value of C and the V now uh, so the first thing uh, we sought to uh, define was how much charge is there that we saw in the last slide Q is equal to CV we calculated the value of C and the value of V. Now we come to the second question is how much time it takes the charge is carried by electrons the carrier velocity of electrons is proportional to the electric field the lateral electric field between source and drain. So uh, uh, we, we just go back and pause and think that what causes the charge to build up is the gate voltage that is why in the last slide we saw that the gate voltage is which is responsible for setting up of the charge is calculated in terms of VGS now the speed at which the no, the so the gate the gate voltage will first form the inversion channel the drain voltage will help the electrons in conducting so these the carrier velocity will depend on the VDS now V is equal to mu E uh, where mu is the mobility of the electrons now the electric field is uh, uh, if you go back to the, the basics the electric field is V by the, the length at the, through which the electric field is uh, the voltage divided by the length of the channel. So, the time it uh, for the carrier to cross channel T is equal to L by V 
time is equal to distance upon speed not, not this is not any special special equation very basic equation so now we know both both things we know we know the the value of c we know the value of t now ids is nothing but the charge divided by the time so we we plug in all the values we calculated earlier so this uh, the equation comes to be mu c ox w by l vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 into vds uh, you can verify this uh, by plugging in uh, all the things we calculated earlier into this equation ids is equal to q channel by t we define one constant which is beta mu c ox w by l now uh, we discussed earlier that c ox is te technology dependent w by l are i would not say they are technology dependent but they are fixed for a particular we when we design let's say an inverter we have to fix the value of w by l for the n mos and for the p mos uh, here the purpose of defining beta to be constant is to study the effect of uh, the change of voltage on ids assuming the all these parameters mu c of w by l are constant for the sake of drawing the iv curve now what happens when the transistor goes into saturation so uh, we see that whenever the uh, the drain uh, the vgd that is uh, or v, uh, vd is greater than vgs minus vt or whenever vds is greater than vd sat the channel pinches off near drain now as we uh, assumed earlier or we saw earlier in the diagram that uh, increase in drain voltage will no longer increase current so now ids in case of linear was this uh, so what we do is we replace vd by the value of vd sat which is vgs minus vt and we just rearrange the equation so after rearranging the the uh, the result is that ids is beta by 2 vgs minus vt square so we see that there's a square relationship of voltage on ids in case of saturation combining all three equations uh, the ideal mos transistor can be represented by shockless first order transistor model these uh, these equations you can call them shockless first order or ideal transistor equation anything goes fine the three regions being let's let's recap first vgs if it's less than vt the nmos will not conduct the current would be zero and the transistor is said to be in cutoff second case as we start increasing vgs but vds is still less than vd sat the current would be beta vgs minus vt minus vds by 2 into vds so we see a dependence of ids on vds in linear region when we start uh, when the voltage or on drain goes beyond vd sat the ids becomes independent of vds and in turn only depends on the square of vgs minus vt so this is an example of a particular nmos device with uh, in 0.6 micrometer process with uh, tx being 100 angstrom mu uh, that is the mobility of electrons being 350 cm square by vc vs the vt being 0.7 volts if you remember the, uh, the vt of a pn junction diode uh, the most famous textbook value is 0.6 so if you see the vt is very close to that now we have plotted ids versus vds at different values of uh, at different values of VD, vgs now uh, the w by l is uh, used to be uh, is used as 4 by 2 lambda lambda if you go back to the first lecture lambda is nothing but the feature size by 2 the feature size being channel length so the um, here there the beta is calculated and the values plugged in so uh, let, let's uh, go through this this iv characteristics uh, if we notice the uh, the, the region uh, the the first part of the curve it is uh, it is very similar to the ohm's law ohm's law curve that means that means it's a linear region where id is increasing with increase in drain voltage 
these different curves correspond to the different values of VGS. So as VGS keeps increasing, the current also keeps increasing and remains linear when, whenever VDI uh, to, till the boundary where VDS is equal to VD sat. For a particular VGS, if we start increasing drain voltage, the current becomes constant since uh, VGS is, is fixed and in the saturation region VGS uh, uh, ID does not depend on VDS so current becomes, current becomes constant with increasing value of VDS. PMOS IV would be very similar to uh, NMOS IV curve uh, the, the only difference being that voltages are and dopings are inverted. One important point to consider here is the mobility of holes. The mobility of holes is typically 2 to 3x lower than that of electrons uh, and, and the, this is the value 120 cm square in, in, in AMI 0 0.6 nanometer process. So for a PMOS to conduct the same amount of current as an NMOS it should be the PMOS should be made wider. As discussed in the first class, uh, for let's say for discussion sake, we assume that uh, that the mobility of electrons is twice the mobility of holes. So we would make PMOS to be twice as wide as NMOS to conduct the same amount of current. What I would uh, recommend is that you should plot the IV characteristics. Try and plot the IV characteristics of PMOS. Uh, very, the curve and, and verify that the curve looks very similar to NMOS uh, and we have, I'm not showing the, the PMOS IV here uh, it's, it's left as a, as a, as a take home assignment for you guys. Now let's look at one very interesting uh, uh, till now what we have discussed VT, uh, VT appears so much in the equations we see that whenever VGS is less than VT that, that the transistor does not conduct. So let's look at VT. VT is a very, very important parameter in in device fabrication. It controls, it determines a lot of things. We we see what what VT is and how does it affect the 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 characteristics of a transistor. So we uh, we saw that uh, a positive VGS will result into a depletion region and ultimately into the the inversion layer being formed. So VT is the voltage at which the minimum voltage at which the MOS device begins to conduct. So what does VT depend on? We till now we have been using VT as sort of a constant in the equations, but it's not a constant. It depends on the gate material. What what material is the gate made of? Uh, usually it's polysilicon nowadays. What is the gate insulation made material? The most popular is silicon dioxide. What is the gate insulator thickness? what is the voltage between source and substrate now till now we have been assuming the source and substrate values to be zero we say that for calculation of the ideal uh, iv characteristic equations we assume the voltage at source to be zero and the voltage at substrate to be zero as well vt is a function of the voltage difference between source and substrate we'll see we'll see how does it affect in, in later slides and channel doping how VT is now for a particular technology for a particular foundry, foundry usually gate material gate insulation material and thickness would be constant the top three would be constant for a particular technology but still there will be devices on a particular chip some of them will exhibit high VT some of them will exhibit average VT and some of them will exhibit lower VT this is not by accident this is many times it is intentional to change the VT how the VT is changed is by varying the doping concentration of insulator this is the first one is the most popular way of tweaking the VT of a particular device it is also it can also be changed or tweaked by using a different insulating material for the gate to increase permittivity but this is again uh, changing the insulating material is not easy because it will change the whole fabrication uh, process. So 
that that's why i say that the insulating material is technology and fabrication lab dependent so the first one uh, that is by varying the doping concentration is the most popular uh, way of uh, changing the vt of a device now what happens when vt changes what happens when vt increases what happens when vt decreases so if you remember the the so okay let's let's look at this this equation uh, vgs uh, which is uh, the equation of current in saturation when vt increases ids decreases so we say that a higher vt now a decrease in ids would mean the device getting slower so increase in vt will result into a slower device a decrease in vt will result into a faster device that is why i say that devices with all three types of vt that is high vt standard vt and low vt are important for digital design since these devices have so the low vt will be fastest the standard vt will be standard the high vt will be slowest correspondingly uh, the vt also determines the power we'll come to that later but uh, let me state here that a high vt which is a slower device would exhibit low leakage power so for designs that are very power sensitive and not much performance is expected out of them will use high vt devices similarly low vt devices would be used for very high performance uh, digital designs where power might not be of a big concern so that is why all three flavors are present in today's designs uh, we will we'll see the power thing later but uh, just remember that the increase in vt will make the device slower but less power hungry similarly decrease in vt will result into faster devices but they will consume more power so uh, we will just review what factors affect the the current the uh, factors affecting current are wl ratio i mean how wide and how long is the the channel the threshold voltage vt the thickness of the gate gate insulator tox which is contained in beta the dielectric constant again contained contained in beta the carrier mobility again contained in beta so now uh, so we what we have uh, seen till now is the effect of the different the gate voltage the drain voltage or uh, rather to be more precise the difference between uh, gate and source that is vgs the dependence of v, the current on vgs and vds now let's see uh, what sort of capacitances are exhibited by a mos transistor so uh, in practice in practice any two conductors that are separated by an insulator have capacitance they will exhibit some amount of capacitance in case of mos transistor the gate to channel capacitance is very very important because this is the thing that causes that creates the channel charge which is necessary for the operation of the mos however the source and drain they are also good conductors that is their n plus regions they are, they exhibit some capacitance to the body why because they have reverse bios diodes to the body these are called diffusion capacitances because they are associated with the diffusion regions in source and drain and these are not desirable okay let's look at the gate gate capacitance uh, just just view that so uh, we say that uh, we we saw that uh, the cgs uh, is uh, epsilon ox wl by tox now here uh, uh, the cox uh, again uh, the the equation is rearranged to uh, to define a parameter called c per micron that is capacitance per micron micron of the uh, of the mos transistor that is uh, uh, the value is given to be typically 2 femtofarad per micrometer this might not be very true for today's uh, some micron devices but uh, yeah so uh, just uh, just to reiterate the gate capacitance is very very important since this is the one that causes the charge to build up in the channel now diffusion capacitance uh, we denote two values csv 
that is the capacitance of source with respect to body C D B the capacitance of drain with respect to body. These two capacitances are undesirable also called parasitic. So whenever you encounter a term parasitic in VLSI design it means anything which is undesirable. It can be parasitic capacitance or parasitic resistance. Why undesirable? Because they make the device slower. Now the capacitance, uh, a parallel plate capacitance, depends on the area and perimeter. So the uh, the way uh, they are the capacitance is decreased is by using small diffusion nodes. Uh, is by uh, so. The, this capacitances are very comparable to gate capacitance for a contacted diffusion. If the diffusion is uncontacted, it decreases and also varies with process. So, this figure shows three different layout techniques. In the first, the A, we see okay, we see that first of all, uh, this is uh, uh, these, these are diffusion regions, the pink ones, uh, the black ones are contacted diffusion regions. So the first one will show a lot of uh, lot of undesirable capacitance. In case of B, the diffusion regions are combined together and contacted. So this will show comparatively lesser uh, parasitic capacitance capacitance compared to A because the diffusion is made smaller. The diffusion node is made smaller. In the third case, uh, the contact is removed. From the uh, from the diffusion region, and since the contact is removed, the width can also be decreased. That is, the node can still be made smaller. So C will have uh, still less parasitic capacitance. Uh, we will not go into much detail about these layout techniques. Some may be applicable to some circuits. Some may not be applicable. Uh, so this is meant for a different course altogether. But this this gives just an idea of that how uh, good layout practices. Can decrease the capacitance, the para the undesirable capacitances. Right. Now this is a figure which uh, shows all the capacitance inside a MOS. Uh, we have seen uh, earlier that uh, we have seen uh, uh, CSB and CDB, which are the the junction capacitances, source to bulk and drain to bulk. And these being the parasitic capacitances. Uh, then other ones are oxide capacitances that is the C uh, the, the gate to channel bulk which is this one CGB is nothing but CG the, the desired capacitance that forms a charge. Now what happens uh, that uh, if an ideal transistor will have no overlapping region between the diffusion and the oxide. So in a self aligned process uh, in an ideal process there will be no overlap between the diffusion that is the two n plus regions uh, let me go back to the figure uh, yeah so uh, yeah so in an ideal uh, transistor the the limit at which the diffusion ends will have no overlap with the oxide layer here, so there is a zero overlap at these two, but in a practical process this is not possible, there is some amount of overlap between the diffusion and the oxide, this overlap causes, this overlap causes two more uh, parasitic capacitances, oxide capacitances which are gain to drain overlap and gate uh, and gate sorry gate to drain overlap and gate to source overlap so we see c g d and c g s they are also type of oxide capacitances um, just so so we see that there are three kinds of oxide capacitances and two kinds of junction capacitances exhibited by a mos out of these five the gate to source is most desirable the rest of them are parasitics so the better the fabrication technique, the better the layout technique, the less will be the, the, the undesirable capacitances exhibited by a MOS. So uh, we saw that in linear mode, the, let us see the value, what is the typical value of, uh, how does the value of 
these gate capacitance compare in linear and saturation mode. Now in linear mode uh, if you go back and remember that the channel is spans the complete length from source to drain. It is equally so we say that the capacitance is equally split between source and drain. So the uh, CGS which is the capacitance between gate and source we say that they are equally divided so we divide half and half from CGS and CBD. So the total channel capacitance uh, as we saw earlier is CG is C of W L. This L effective is nothing but L in this case the complete length. However in saturation mode we see that the channel is pinched off. So actually in, in saturation mode the capacitance of the, the oxide capacitance goes lower because the, the capacitance exhibited by gate to drain is 0. Why 0? Because there is no channel here. Similarly, uh, it is approximated that CGS becomes 2 by 3 of the uh, of C ox WL and the total therefore the total is sum of CGD and CGS which is 2 by 3 of C ox WL, L effective is nothing but L. So we see that the gate capacitance and saturation mode is lower than the capacitance exhibited in the linear mode. Okay, now we see, uh, now till now we have been assuming that the voltage on source is 0, the source is grounded. What if source is greater than 0? A very good example is a transistor which is trying to pass VDD. So let us see a transistor where the gate and drain are both connected to VDD. I can I can say this is drain or this is source does not matter the two terminals are connected to VGD one of them being gate. Let us see what happens now if gate is VGD the voltage on source if it is greater than VGD minus VT the VGS that is the difference of voltage between gate and source will be less than VT and the transistor will turn itself off. I will repeat if the voltage on source goes beyond VG, VGD minus VT the VGS will stop being greater than VT the threshold voltage and the transistor will enter cutoff region. This is why we say that the voltage here at the source cannot be greater than VGD minus VT which means that if you use a pass transistor in a design and try to pass a 1 using NMOS, the NMOS will not pass VDD, it will not pass voltage higher than VDD minus VT which is that is why it is called a degraded 1. Logic level 1 is represented by VDD since the pass transistor is able to pass only VDD minus VT it is called a degraded 1. In other words we say that NMOS passes a strong 0 but a weak 1 that is why in earlier circuits we saw that NMOS is used for the pull down logic not for pull up. In most uh, designs NMOS is only used for pull down network since it, it passes a strong 0 correspondingly CMOS will pass a strong 1 but it will pass a voltage which is no lo no lower than, than its threshold voltage that is VTP. That is why PMOS is used in the pull up network because it passes a strong one but a weak zero. Now what happens when we use the pass transistor circuits to form form any kind of any kind of design? So let's see this uh, uh, this circuit using NMOS on the top. So um, NMOS if it is gate in one terminal is tied to VDD the other terminal will remain VDD minus VT. Let us see a series of pass transistors. So the first one here passes VDD minus VT but the second one the second one passes VDD minus VT again because it is uh, the gate is tied to VDD but the other terminal is not VDD actually it is less than 
it is actually VGT minus VTN. So, it, so please verify using the equations of VGS being greater than VT for the NMOS to operate in uh, the on mode and verify that the voltage at the end of the circuit will remain VGT minus VT. There is a separate configuration here. So, if you see that uh, uh, where we uh, connect the output of one pass transistor to the gate of another, in the first case the source of uh, one transistor was connected to the brain of other, similarly they were connected in series, but here the source of one transistor is connected as a gate. Now the gate voltage should be greater than Vt. I mean the difference between the VGA should be greater than VT for a transistor to operate in an on mode. So we see that this transistor here will exhibit a 2 VT drop because the voltage on gate is decreased by VT already. Please please again I request you to go back to the equations and verify that, that this indeed is the case. So pass transistor is a, is a very popular logic family which is used to define gates. It is not used everywhere because of this precise reason that it uh, it doesn't pass a strong one. We'll see what happens if you don't pass a strong one. What are the disadvantages? Similarly, uh, if we use PMOS as a pull down device, we see that the voltage at source will not be zero. It will be the v, it will be VTP. The absolute value is used because VTP is negative. So let's say VTP is minus 0.7 volts. The voltage here would be 0.7 volts, positive 0.7. Now uh, we we saw that the we saw the ideal ideal transistor equations. We saw that we saw that Shockley model. We saw we saw the Shockley model equations. Uh, obviously, they are ideal being ideal equations. They are not very accurate for modern transistors. They are too complicated for hand analysis all the uh, all such analysis where we want to see the voltage effect on the on the current and all that is usually done using spice it's it not it's not using done using hand because these equations are not linear and, and they they are too much complicated for uh, for using hand analysis uh, but but for uh, for study sake let's let's devise a technique where we treat a transistor as a resistor as we saw that in linear mode it actually exhibits such functionality where IDS linearly varies with VDS. So what we could say is that using Ohm's law we say that IDS is equal to VDS by R where R is the average value across switching of the digital gate. Obviously again and this is uh, idealist model and it is inaccurate to predict current at a given time. But still, this model is good enough to predict the delay of a gate. Not the actual delay, but a delay value in terms of RNC, which can be compared across gates and across different layout techniques. So, this is a very useful tool where uh, you can quantify that a particular gate design, what kind of delay it will exhibit. Let us see how, how is it is done. So we call this model the RC delay model. So what we do is uh, we say that a MOS can be represented by an ideal switch plus a capacitance and an on resistance. Whenever the switch is off, obviously the resistance is infinite. Whenever the switch is on, there is some finite on resistance. We say that let us say the NMOS has resistance R and the capacitance C. A PMOS will have a similar a similar unit PMOS will have a similar capacitance C, but will have an on resistance which is twice that of NMOS because the mobility is the mobility of holes is half. So unit NMOS will have resistance R, capacitance C, unit PMOS will have resistance 2R and capacitance C. Capacitance is proportional to width as the width increases, the capacitance increases, but resistance, if you remember, is, is inversely proportional to width. So, the width increases, the R decreases. Now, uh, 
look carefully at the figure below of the NMOS uh, gate drain source and K represents the width of the NMOS. Assume the length being same of uh, all the PMOS and NMOS in the design and the, assume the width to be K, K is a factor, simple factor. So now uh, this uh, using the RC delay model we convert this NMOS into a, a switch an ideal switch which exhibits capacitance drain capacitance KC we saw that K the C is proportional to width so if width factor is K we say that the drain capacitance is KC again the source capacitance is KC the gate capacitance is KC plus there is a non resistance R by K since R is inversely proportional to width. Similarly for for PMOS the capacitance is remain same but the resistance becomes double of NMOS. Now let us analyze the design and see how uh, how the delay can be estimated. Uh, these are some values of C and uh, R for a particular technology. Um, this is a very old technology, so uh, yeah, you can you can uh, uh, these are not important for for modern technologies. We we will just talk in terms of R and C. Now, what does a unit transistor mean? It may refer to a minimum contacted devices. The minimum uh, contacted device will be four by two lambda, since lambda is feature size by two. It doesn't does not matter what uh, what width uh, what what kind of uh, what how much wide device you use for your analysis as long as you're consistent. If all your devices in your the circuit you are analyzing are consistent, then you don't need to be concerned about what is the width of the unit transistor. Let's uh, estimate the delay of an inverter using uh, this RC delay model. Uh, it says that estimate the delay of a fan out of one. The fan out of one means one inverter is connected to another inverter. So it's an inverter pair. Both the inverters are of are of same type. That is, uh, the PMOS is twice as wide as NMOS. So we convert this into an RC delay model. So P, since NMOS width is one, so all the NMOS capacitances will be C. The PMOS width is two. So all the capacitances will be 2C. The R of NMOS and PMOS would be same because uh, again uh, PMOS is twice as resistive as NMOS and since it has width of 2 so the resistance becomes R. Now this case this particular case assumes that uh, so we are we are estimating the delay of uh, delay at point Y. We are not estimating delay at the end of the second inverter, we are estimating delay at point Y. So, how much capacitance would Y see? Y would see the only the gate capacitance because it is connected to the two gate terminals of this inverter. The gate capacitance, similarly, if you see Y here, it will see uh, C at NMOS and 2C at PMOS. Similarly, we, we, okay, we look at a case where PMOS is open. And NMOS is closed. So when NMOS is closed and PMOS is open, whenever the uh, capacitances are, are in parallel, they add up. So the capacitance at Y will become 2C plus C3C plus the inverter here. Since this part is open, the PMOS is open, this will go away. It will see 2C from here, it will see the C from NMOS and the R from NMOS. This C does not matter because it is connected between two grounds. So, we see that uh, uh, in effect, whenever this transistor, uh, the, the fan out of one inverter, fan out of one inverter, when PMOS is open, the delay is 6 RC. That is what I said is that using this RC delay model, we can estimate the delay of a particular design obviously the delay values we are not concerned about. So let us say we are making a, a complex gate there can be uh, multiple ways of designing that gate using some logic families 
Now we can uh, estimate the how much delay will that gate take. Uh, the area we would know, uh, a, a gross area we will know by the transistor count, and the delay we can estimate on paper using this RC delay technique. This is useful to compare different uh, types of circuit designs. Now what I would request is that uh, all of you to go back and estimate the delay of few basic designs let us say 2 input NAND gate, 2 input AND gate. Uh, we will explore this area in detail uh, when we come to the uh, the calculation of propagation delay using logical effects. this will be very useful there. Now uh, till now we, we saw that uh, we saw the ideal equations of MOS and the Shockley first order transistor models. Now let us see what are the non ideal effects that is the the effects we see in the real transistor. What are these effects and how do they affect this, this IV curve? Now uh, this is a plot of uh, a 180 nanometer TSMC process using the ideal model where the value of beta, VT and VDD are given. This is the, the curve which is very similar to the curve we saw earlier, this is the ideal curve. On the next slide we would see the same process, the same process would mean same beta, VT and VDD values. But the model here used is not the ideal model, but a spice model. Now please note that a spice model is much much more complex than a. It is much more complex, and it mimics a real, very close to real transistor functionality after fabrication. So the spice models are the golden standard for uh, for. Analyzing the uh, MOS circuits, both digital and analog, and these represent the actual transistor behavior on silicon. Now we see this curve, and we try to notice what is different between these curves and the curve and the ideal curve we saw on this slide. This is the this is the ideal curve, and this is the the actual curve of the device. What we see is less on current, so if we see the IDS here goes till 250 for let us say for VGS 1.8 the IDS lies between 200 and 250 micro however on the previous slide the IDS is much higher lies between 300 and 400, so we see less on, on current, we see no square law that means the current here in saturation is increasing. It is, it is not constant as predicted by the ID model. Now we will see what physical effects cause this. First thing, we assume the carrier velocity which is proportional to the E field, the lateral E field which is uh, VDS by L, but at fields, higher fields that which are present in, in, the, in the transistor, the fields are higher because the L is very, very low. In, in present transistors the L is of the order of nanometers, so let us say for a for a 40 nanometer device the L will be 40 nanometers, this means this is the reason why the drain voltage and the gate voltage will have continued to reduce over technology shrinking because the electric fields have been becoming so much stronger, so uh, you can go back to your paper and see that what if the L is let us say 180 nanometer and VDD is 1 let us say 1.8 volt, how does that compare to L being 40 nanometer and VDD being let us say 1 volt, you would see notice that the electric field strength has been growing that is why we have to pull VDD down, still the electric field is high enough to saturate the carrier velocity. Why? Because what happens is that at high electric fields the carriers will scatter off atoms and velocity will reach a value which is called desaturation, desaturated velocity Vsat uh, is mentioned here for electrons and for holes, you see that the electrons are are faster than, than holes, so a better model we took V as, uh, v as e, mu Vds by L, but this is a better, better model mu e lat e by 1 plus e lat by e sat 
So the V saturation is defined to be mu into E psi. This is a curve of the carrier velocity with respect to the electric field. We see that it it starts off linearly, but again it kinds of saturate at some point wherever E increases. This means that uh, for the whenever transistor is on, in ideal model we saw that it exhibits a square relationship. But here, the velocity saturated current it increases with VDD, it does not increase with VDD square. So, the square relationship is no more true. Uh, you can uh, you can verify this by plugging in the value of V. So, you will come to this equation. So, we see that uh, the velocity saturation what it means is that the on current will not follow square relationship, it will kind of uh, it will follow the linear relationship. Uh, but real transistors are partially velocity saturated they do not exhibit either the first order effect or the second order effect they follow an effect which is somewhere between 1 and 2. So, we say that IDS is proportional to VDD raised to the power alpha where alpha is a value an empirical value between 1 and 2 this is called the alpha power model. So, the Shockley model is an order 2 model, the alpha power model. So, the, the graph here shows the simulated means the uh, the spice value, which is the most accurate. It shows alpha and the Shockley. You see that there is so much difference between the Shockley and the simulated, but alpha comes quite close to the, the simulated model. So, the, the equations. Uh, these are the equations for uh, for the alpha power model for IDS uh, where ID sat is defined and VD sat is defined. Now uh, another effect is called channel length modulation which uh, forces the transistor into the non ideal territory. We saw that uh, uh, there is a depletion region and if we increase the width of uh, we saw that the inversion region the the area that is filled with with carriers it pinches off if we increase the VDS. So the effective length of the channel earlier we were take we are assuming in linear region we saw that the complete channel is available, but in saturation region the length of the channel available is less than the full length because of the pinch drop region. So the L effective is L minus LD where LD is the length of the the depletion region the area where which is devoid of electrons. Now, shorter L effective gives more current. So, IDS will increase with VDS even in saturation. In ideal model, we saw that IDS does not depend on VDS in saturation, but here because of the channel length modulation, the IDS will still increase in saturation mode with increasing VDS because increasing VDS causes L effective to decrease. So, this is the equation uh, which takes care of this, uh, please remember this is again just a model this is just a modeling of this effect. So, what uh, here is done is that this is the equation of the transistor in saturation added to this to capture the effect of VDS increasing VDS we have added one more factor called 1 plus lambda VDS. Lambda is channel length modulation coefficient please do not confuse it with the feature size lambda we have been discussing before this is a separate lambda it is again an empirical value which is calculated to fit the IV characteristic. So, this effect 1 plus lambda VDS captures the effect of increasing VDS due to channel length modulation. Uh, there is lot of uh, literature available on this, uh, so if anybody wants to look into detail I can go through that. Uh, the, the purpose of this chapter is to introduce you to the non ideal characteristic and uh, uh, to show you that uh, how the ID of a, how the IDS varies with VDS in an actual transistor.
There is one more factor called body effect. Now, all along we have been saying that the substrate of the moss is tied to zero. And the body is grounded for n moss. For p moss, obviously, it will be tied to zero. But what if uh, the uh, the source voltage increases because source is connected to the channel? That means what if the voltage difference? So we we uh, we assume that the voltage at source and the voltage at bulk are both zero. So V B S that is difference of voltage between body and source is zero. What if the source is in the the source as at voltage is not zero but positive? That we saw we saw one case in in terms of pass transistor. The voltage at source was not zero. So this affects the V T of the device. We saw earlier during the discussion of the V T. And there was one point where it it was said that the V T depends on the voltage difference between bulk and source. So this is the the part where we study that. So V T is the gate voltage necessary to invert channel, but V T increases if source voltage increases because source is connected to the channel. Increase in V T with V S is called the body effect. Now let's see how it is captured in the equation. So again, we define a, a, a constant called VT zero, which is nothing but the VT of the device considering VBS to be zero. Plus, we define a factor here, which is body effect con, uh, coefficient, and this body effect coefficient is um, uh, so here we we see the definition of the body effect coefficient. Uh, I believe that you would be studying this effect in more detail in uh, in your uh, device physics. So this is just a recap of that. So phi s is a uh, surface potential at threshold. So see uh, the V s b is captured here. So if V s b is zero, V t is nothing but V t zero. However, if V s b is positive, V t tends to increase. This all depends on the doping concentration. And the intensing carrier carrier concentration. That is why I say that if you want to uh, revise this in detail, you should go back to your device physics uh, book, uh, which has much more detail about this about the VT changing with respect to the body effect. So we saw we saw three effects. Uh, we saw the body effect which changes VT. We saw the channel length modul modulation effect, which means uh, which what it does is that it will make IDS increase. Uh, let's let's recap a bit. So we saw three effects, which are uh, the three non-ideal effects. The first non-ideal effect was the velocity saturation. The carrier velocity saturates. This means the on current is less as compared to the ideal model. Second thing we saw was the channel length modulation, which means the the current increases in case of saturation with increasing VDF. Third thing we saw was the body effect, which results into an increased VT, and we discussed earlier that increased VT will mean a lower current. Now, what happens? We also were uh, all this while we were saying that a, a, a transistor that is in cut off region will not exhibit any current, but the simulated results, if we expand that part of the graph where the transistor was in cut off. We see there is some, even though very less, but there is some current, and the current does not go to zero and cut off. Uh, we see uh, this is a very very important factor in in today's uh, microelectronics. This is called the leakage current. So uh, we see what are the, what are the sources of this leakage current. One is the sub threshold con conduction, which is which. Says that the transistor cannot abruptly turn on and off. It will take a finite amount of time to switch from on to off, and there is a conduction during that period. There is a junction leakage. But we say that the transistor is cut off because the diodes are reverse biased. But even a reverse biased diode, due to the minor minority carrier conduction, exhibits some junction leakage. Then there is a gate leakage. That is. The, with the gate drive dielectrics becoming thinner and thinner as, as the technology progresses, 
there will be an effect of gate uh, of electrons tunneling through the gate dielectric which is called gate leakage. Now sub threshold leakage is the biggest source in modern transistor. Uh, this is the equation for sub threshold leakage uh, I will not go into details of this uh, again you can refer to your device physics for this. What it means what, what, what it means is that as the technology progresses the devices get smaller and smaller they start exhibiting more and more leakage current and in earlier technologies let us say 0.6 micrometer 0.1 micrometer etc the leakage current was not important it was, it was not even analyzed it was not in, even taken into care during, during the design of a circuit it was not a not a majority factor but now with uh, so small devices all these three factors the sub threshold conduction the junction leakage the gate leakage all these three are increasing resulting into uh, these becoming majority factors and we have to also think about uh, so you can the deck, there will be a transistor with let us say the, the gate is at VDD or something uh, or, or let us say the gate at 0 voltage uh, and MOS transistor we assume that it is off it is not conducting current but actually it is conducting a small amount of current and let us say there are billions of transistors on the chip doing the same thing when the chip is off. So the billions of transistors will contribute a significant amount of current. Uh, and it is a very very important factor now because a lot of these semiconductors are used for battery powered devices right. So uh, there is one more factor called drain induced barrier lowering uh, which says that the drain voltage also affects VT. So we saw that uh, the VT being affected by the difference of voltage between source and bulk here uh, this effect also. Uh, in this effect the drain voltage also affects VT, so VT is VT minus eta uh, VDS, so this means that high drain voltage causes sub threshold uh, leakage to increase, right. So um, there is an, there's a note on junction leakage, uh, again uh, the junction leakage will depend on the area and perimeter of the diffusion region, uh, I will not go into detail of this. Now uh, we talked about gate leakage that the carriers tunneling through the very thin oxides uh, um, as I said earlier that negligible it was negligible for older processes but it is becoming critically important now since the the oxides are becoming thinner and thinner. Uh, now uh, let us see a, a small note about the temperature sensitivity of these devices. So whenever temperature increases it reduces the mobility of electrons and holes it reduces VT. So let us try to fill in the gaps here what happens to I on, I on with temperature. So increasing temperature reduces mobility reduces VT reduce reduce mobility means a lower I on so I on will decrease with temperature if we reduce VT so the threshold is getting reduced yes it will affect the ID. ID might increase but the mobility factor here is more dominant than the reduced VT so ion will decrease still decrease with temperature but IOF will increase because IOF uh, which is the, the leakage current depends on VT higher the VT lower the leakage current lower the VT higher the leakage current. Now uh, so what happens if the transistors are not, not ideal they are still still behaving as it is they still allow us to make very complicated designs but what do these effects matter for they are important because of the supply they what they determine is the supply voltage choice we will see the logical effort in more detail they determine the power consumption they determine what logic families can be used for example can we use pass transistors or not they matter for the temperature of operation. So uh, whenever devices are fabricated not all devices on a chip are identical. Uh, VSI fabrication is one of the most sophisticated and one of the most complex manufacturing techniques on this planet. 
what it also means is that let's say for a particular technology for let's say 40 nanometer it the fabrication will uh, set the feature size to be 40 nanometer but not all devices on the chip will exhibit a 40 nanometer channel length some will have 41 42 so it will exhibit a gaussian curve a normal curve where the average value will be at 40 but a lot of devices will be larger than 40 lot of devices will be smaller than 40 this type of effect is called parameter variation transistors have uncertainty in parameters for example L effective VT T ox of n mos and p mos, they vary around typical values. I talked about channel, yeah, L effective is nothing but channel length. So, a device, if it has a shorter L effective, if it has a low VT, and if it has a thin oxide, it will become faster. So, in n mos with a shorter L, a lower VT and thin oxide will become faster. You can verify it going back to the equations. slow will be a slow device would be of opposite that is an increased vt a longer l effective and a thicker oxide not all parameters are independent for n mos and p mos that means some parameters can be linked that is let's say if uh, a, a process is showing an increased channel length for n mos it might also show increased channel length for p mos device but some of the factors can be independent between p mos and n mos so a graph here shows that in mos uh, uh, a process can so we use two variable uh, uh, notation for uh, the device uh, speed on on a particular process we can say that a particular part a particular chip manufactured can exhibit slow slow which means in mos slow p mos slow can be fast slow that mean in mos is fast and p mos is slow it can be fast fast that means both nmos and pmos are exhibiting fast behavior or it can be slow fast that is pmos being slow and nmos being fast so but uh, apart from nmos and pmos speeds the vd and t will was also vary in time and space uh, we will come to this later in detail but let's let's discuss this for for a, for a short time uh we will see in detail why vd and t will also vary in time and space but let's assume for now that vdd on a chip is not let's say you apply a vdd on the chip chip pin a vdd of 1.0 volt the vdd will not remain it will not all the devices will not the same see the same vdd some will see uh, they will all see lower than 1 volt but how much lower depends on the device's placement uh so if vdd is with some device let's say we compare two devices uh, two nmos transistors one nmos is seeing let's say 0.95 other nmos is seeing let's say 0.9 so the nmos which is seeing 0.95 which is seeing a higher vdd will be faster similarly let's say two nmos are two transistors are placed far from each other one is seeing a higher temperature one is seeing a lower temperature the device that is seeing a lower temperature will be fast so here uh, there is a table which says what will be the fast so let's say a typical voltage is 1.8 and typical temperature is 70 now at a uh, let's say a device uh, a particular device if it sees 0c it will become so a fast device if it, for example if the voltage is higher and the temperature is lower the uh, the chip will be faster if voltage is lower and a temperature is higher the chip will be slower so what we do is when we we call these process corners that is the process corners define the worst case operating conditions for a particular chip we cannot let's say we manufacture a chip we give it to a customer we have to tell him that okay this is the temperature range in which you can operate this chip what is the if the chip is meant for space applications the temperatures can go below zero what if they are uh, used in a uh, in, in devices that are switched on all the time let's say mobile phone the temperatures will go very high they can go quite high so we have to define a temperature range for a particular chip we will define a voltage for a particular chip these are these two are the specifications but when verifying the chip we will verify the chip at the worst case corners 
and obviously if the chip works in all the corner cases it should work in the middle it should work for any combination of these corners because these corners represent the extreme cases of the chip operating conditions so we define four four parameters we define in mos speed e mos speed voltage and temperature a combination of all these will define whether the corner is fast slow or typical let's see let's see this uh, let's see for uh, how how does the combination of all these corners affect some of the parameters so let's say uh, uh, during the design i want to uh, the, the cycle time here is nothing but the frequency of operation which means the performance of the chip let's say i i manufacture uh, i design a processor and i want to see the effect of all these four parameters that, that is n mos speed p mos speed the voltage and the temperature on the performance so if n mos becomes faster so let, let, let's see this table the cycle time the cycle time the performance of the chip will be worst when the devices are slow that is n mos and p mos are slow the vdt is less than the ideal that is slow and the temperature is again on the higher side that is the devices become slow so i would want to check the performance of my device at the worst case corner the worst case corner here means all the n mos p mos vdt and temperature being on the worst case side what about power power will be more whenever the devices are fast that is with they have low vdt when the vdt is higher because power again depends on vdt and when the temperature is on the lower side so we say that we want to test power of the chip at a corner where all these parameters are at the f value that is the result into a faster device similarly for sub threshold leakage i would want the extreme case would be the n mos and p mos are faster vdd is more but the temperature is on the higher side as we saw earlier that a higher temperature causes more leakage um there's no uh, need to uh, fret a lot about these this corner information if it is not clear at this point of time this will become very very clear when we look at unit 3 4 and 5 but please remember that uh, these process corners are that a fabrication uh, process is not ideal that is uh, all the there are hundreds of parameters and most of these parameters exhibit an average value and a normal curve kind of distribution what it means is that not all the devices on a on a chip are will perform equivalently that is not all n mos will be similar or n mos will be faster or or all the p mos will be slower some will be slower some will be faster how do we incorporate this in our digital design is the thing that we will see in unit 3 4 and 5 now uh, at the end of this uh, chapter i would want all of you to uh, do some assignments which would be useful in, in making the concepts clear i would uh, recommend that all uh, that all of you uh, if you are not already familiar with spice uh, use some spice tool start getting familiar with it and plot the nmos and pmos iv curves one of the example of spice tools is lt spice so lt spice is a freely available uh, spice analysis tool from linear technologies it has lot of uh, pmos and nmos models um, but uh, if you want to uh, so you can use that to to design the uh, to curve the uh, to analyze the pmos and nmos transistors and plot the iv curve you could also use uh, the asu uh, uh, has uh, uh, something called ptm model uh, these are transistor models that go as low as i guess maybe 16 nanometer or something which are more representative of today's technology so what you could do is you could download the let's say you could download the 65 nanometer models from the ptm website and try to plug in these models into a spice tool so that you will be able to instantiate these transistors these which which conform to the spice model uh, 
so pl uh, please note that in spice let's say a nmos will always have four terminals but its characteristics will depend on what model it's linked to for example it can be linked to a the, the model name shall let's say bsim something it can be linked to a bsim version 3 or it can be linked to a ptm 65 nanometer so depending on what model what spice model it's linked to it will exhibit those kinds of iv curves and you have to be very careful about the vdd so if you are using an older technology the vdd can go as big as 10 volts but when we are using ptm models please be careful that the vdd values will not should not exceed 10 volt uh, you should also uh, so when you plot these these curves you will also you should also note the non idle characteristics whatever we discuss that is uh, the leakage current uh, in the cutoff region you, uh, you will see the increasing ids with increasing vds uh, and so on so you should all verify the uh, you should all look carefully at the iv curve and verify that you are in fact observing the non idle characteristics if you are not observing the non idle characteristics there there is definitely something wrong with the setup so it will these assignments would be very very useful in making the concept clear what whatever we discuss in this chapter uh next chapter uh, so this was all about mos theory next chapter onwards we will start discussing about different types of uh, digital design techniques we'll see different logic families and so on thanks a lot